It may not feel like the spring season weather-wise, but it is happy springtime, and today it is opening day for the West Perry Lady Mustangs under the new direction of head, first year head coach Danny Wansick. And we are set for mid pen colonial division action to start the year as the West Perry Lady Mustangs take on the Big Spring Bulldogs here at West Perry High School Farsley Softball Field. Hello everyone watching on the West Perry Athletic Department YouTube channel. My name is Alex Wall, the Golden Pipes of West Perry Athletics. Here for what is always an exciting game when these two teams meet, the Big Spring Bulldogs. Already hang into this game 2-0 on the year. A year ago, the Lady Bulldogs were the number three seed in the District 3 for a championship tournament, and they got upset in the first round by the number six seed, Berks Catholic, a 3-2 winner for Berks Catholic over Big Spring in the District 3 quarterfinals. So the Big Spring Bulldogs, they know that last year was a tough ending for them, but they are starting off this season in a big way. Already two games under their belt with two wins. They start off the year with a dominant 22-1 Mercy Rule victory on the road at Bermudian Springs. That was a week ago from yesterday. And then Big Spring, their last game was a 17-7 victory in their, in their home opener against the Carlisle Thundering Herd. That was last Thursday. The, so the Big Spring Bulldogs already 39 runs in two games. And it's a pretty impressive start for the Lady Bulldogs. Big Spring 15 and 6 a year ago. The number 3 seed in the District 3 4A Championship Tournament. The West Prairie Mustangs a year ago 5 and 15 overall under the direction of head coach Corey Show. But now there is a new sheriff in town for the Lady Mustangs, Danny Wansick. He was the assistant coach for the Lady Mustangs a year ago. But now Corey Show has decided to take some time off from coaching. And so Danny Wansick, the first year head coach for the Lady Mustangs, making his head coaching debut for Westbury here today. Danny Wansick also, he is also, he is being assisted by new assistant coach Sean Church, and we also have a volunteer coach in Jessica Hoffman. And the Perry County Times a couple weeks ago, actually last week, had a very nice story about Danny Wansick taking over for the West Perry Lady Mustangs. And he said to the Perry County Times that he has a realistic goal this year. He wants to the West Prairie Mustangs to have at least a winning record. He wants to make sure this is a 500 team. And so, like, that's a pretty good goal, to be honest, for a first-year head coach, Danny Wansick. I mean, yeah, it's not like it's got to be a dominant season for the Lady Mustangs, but to be a 500 team, especially with the way the Mustangs have been performing the last couple of years since winning the state championship, that is a really good goal for the West Prairie Lady Mustangs. And so, I mean, also with a 500 team, you have a pretty good chance of making the playoffs at the end of the season. The mid pen colonial Deficient preseason polls were released by Pen Live a couple weeks ago. West Prairie has, or excuse me, Pen Live has West Prairie finishing in seventh place out of eight teams, only being James Buchanan, who is predicted to finish last in the colonial division. Waynesboro and Boarding Springs are tied for fifth. The Big Spring Lady Bulldogs are expected to finish fourth. We have a tie for second place in Shippensburg and Green Castle Rancho, and this should not be a surprise to anybody. The Northern Polar Bears is on is expected to finish first at the end of the season in the Colonial Fisher. Of course, the Northern Polar Bears winning the 5A state championship a year ago. So look, so the team, the umpires main is underway. Our umpires today calling balls and strikes behind the plate is Rod Bartlett, and calling up the bases is Frank Fiorella. And here we go with the starting lineups as we get set. Here's the starting lineup first for the Big Spring Lady Bulldogs under the direction of head coach Mike Gutshaw. Batting first is the right fielder number 40 Kendall Boring. Batting second is the center fielder, number 11, Sydney Adler. Batting third is the shortstop, number 21, Fick Rinaldi. Batting fourth is the first baseman, number 16, Zoe Zimmerman. Batting fifth is the starting pitcher for the Big Spring Bulldogs. Batting number seven is Maeve Hurley. Batting, number, batting in the sixth spot is the catcher, batting number 43, Daphina Rodabal. Batting 7th is the left fielder, number 22, Izzy Fry. Batting 8th is the second baseman, number 32, Sophie Wickard. 
And by the ninth is the third baseman, number 24, Aubrey Frain. Substitutions for the Lady Bulldogs and crew, Riley Stewart, right, number 28. Number 5 is Sean Adler. Number 6 is Cadence Killian. Number six, number 9 is Avery Scott. Number 14 is Chance Flanagan. And number 19 is Hannah Darhauer. And the best play Lady Mustangs go taking the field for the first time in the regular season. The West Prairie Mustangs had two home scrimmages in the last two weeks. They started off, their first scrimmage was against the Carlisle Thundering Herd, and the Mustangs beat the Carlisle Thundering Herd in the first scrimmage before dropping a tough one in a scrimmage last Tuesday at home against Bickerville. And here's the defensive positions for the West Prairie Mustangs. The starting pitcher is the sophomore, Addie Wiest. The catcher is Rylan Kelly. The third baseman is Haley Prowl, or excuse me, first baseman is Haley Prowl. Second base is Le Lexi Naus. Third baseman is Lauren Foster. The shortstop is the senior Taylor Roofer. And out in the outfield, out in left is Maddie Jenkins. Center, center fielder is Celine Hoffman. And Greer Bowles is out in right field. As we are ready to go, the first pitch about to be delivered from Ali Weiss. Saying it over to Kendall Boring to lay us off here, and the 2024 spring sports season is underway. And it's a ball outside, 1 0. Kendall Boring, the right fielder for the Lady Bulldogs, already ahead, 1 0 in the count. Addy Weist, a sophomore for the West Prairie Mustangs, and there's a call strike one. 1 1 1 in the count here to Kendall Boring. Addy Weist. Had a really good freshman year, despite only getting five wins a year ago. It could have been a little bit better for Addie Weist. I mean, she had a couple of uh, tough losses. Here's a ground ball here, and scooped up by Taylor Lufer. A throw from Lufer's knees get, drops in front of Haley Prout, and just like that, kind of boring is on with an infield single. We want to thank everyone at home for tuning in on the West Prairie Athletic Department YouTube channel. And we are here for Sydney Adler now. Sydney Adler rips one out to left field, and that is a line drive and it's caught by Greer Bowles. One pitch, one out here with Bar still on first. My name is Alex Wolf, the Golden Pipes of West Perry Athletics. Here for the season opener for West Perry. This is the first of back-to-back -back home games this week for the Lady Mustangs. And here is the first pitch to Fick Rinaldi, the big spring shortstop. It's up high for ball one. Addy Weist about to deliver St. Sean signs a bunt here and a throw to second and Boring is safe at second on the stolen base. There's a, that was ball two to Rinaldi. For West Perry, five of their first six games are at home, which is huge for the Mustangs to have a lot of home, home games to start off the season. Their first road game is next Tuesday at James Buchanan. Thursday, they are here at home against Chippensburg. Two balls, one strikes here to Fick Rinaldi, and the next pitch is away, missing ball three. Three one here, Kendall Boring over at second uh, on the stolen base. And the next pitch, and right in there, right on the corner that time, and it's a full count, three and two now. One out, right on for second. Uh, we're looking for a first strikeout of the season. Here's the payoff pitch, and it just misses the corner, and it is ball four. So the Bulldogs with two on now. Head coach is Mike Gutshaw for the Lady Bulldogs. And batting fourth here is the first baseman, number 16, Zoe Zimmerman. And sorry, Sarah rips one, and it's just going to go foul out of play. Strike one, an early aggressive swing here. That's what we're used to seeing Zoe Saruman in the last couple of years. Zoe Saruman 
very aggressive on the first pitch, and she was just a tad late on that one. So strike one. And next pitch looked to be a slider as outside of one and two, or excuse me, one ball, one strike. Ideal conditions for opening day for the Lady Mustangs. Game time temperature staying pretty at 57 degrees. Typical fall we spring weather in the late part of March, and this ball is caught out there in left field by Maddie Jenkins. And there are two away now. Nobody going any further on the flyout. So up next here is the starting pitcher, Maeve Hurley. She was originally positioned as a designated player, but she is getting the start, and she swings at the first pitch, and it's grounded easily by the first baseman, Haley Prowell, and that's a three unassisted to end the inning. The Bulldogs leave two on base, and it'll be the West Prairie Mustangs' first turn of the season to swing for a batch. We're going to the bottom of the first, scoreless, here at West Prairie High School. We are back here, getting set for a ball on the first, the Big Spring Lady Bulldogs. No runs on one hit, no errors, leaving two runs on base to start the game. And now, here is the starting lineup for the West Prairie Lady Mustangs. Leading off will be the third baseman, number five, Lauren Foster. Batting second will be the shortstop, number 12, Taylor Lufer. Batting third is the catcher, number eight, Rylan Kelly. Batting fourth is the starting pitcher for West Perry, number 18, Addie Beast. Batting fifth is the left fielder, number 15, Maddie Jenkins. Batting sixth will be the center fielder, number six, Celine Hoffman. Batting seventh is the right fielder, number 14, Greer Bowles. Batting eighth is the second baseman, number one, Lexi Naus. And batting ninth is the designated player, number nine, Carly Shaw. Shaw is heading for the flex player, who is the first Baseman number 13, Haley Prowl. So here we go. Scoreless for the Lady Bulldogs to start the game. That's the first time this season that Big Spring was scoreless in the first inning. A big Spring already with two wins this season. 2-0 to start. And a first pitch strike to Lauren Foster from the starting pitcher, Maeve Hurley. Maeve Hurley getting the start in the pitching circle for the Lady Bulldogs. Lauren Foster, a senior this year for West Ferry, and their, this next pitch is just a bit high for ball one. One and one to count here to Lauren Foster, a great athlete here at West Ferry. She was on the field hockey team and also had basketball, and so here we go with her last sports season in a West Ferry uniform. She's going for a bunt there, and that drops foul. Uh, strike two. Definitely some big shoes to fill on the top of the lineup. A year for the last four years in the top of the lineup for West Perry was Emily McCarty, and we heard she's doing great things in the workforce. And yeah, I mean she ha she was an incredible speed threat for the West Prairie Lady Mustangs. And there is ball two, two balls and two strikes here to Lauren Foster. Ball in the first, no score, as you can see on the top of your screen. Here comes the two, two, and that's way up high for ball three. We have a new position for our broadcast here today. You probably remember from a year ago, we were across the road here in front of the scoreboard in the soccer field behind us, but with the 
stuff that we have, we decided to switch it up a little bit, and now we're in this new position. And this ball was up in the air for quite a while, and it was good enough for the for number 40, Kendall Boring, to make a long run and make the grab for the first out. Nice play there for Kendall Boring out there in right field. That was a full count pitch, by the way, as we saw it fly out on right. And here comes the senior shortstop, Taylor Lufer. She also plays basketball, and she's a good soccer player here. The senior Taylor Lufer taking a look at strike one. First pitch strikes to the top two hitters for West Prey. Very important here for Big Spring. Uh, you take a look at this referee. This is a local referee in the mid pen Colonial Division, the closest rival for West Perry in this division. And it's always a fun game whenever these two teams get together. Like the, Especially when some of these girls on both teams, they will play with, with each other in the travel ball season. And here comes the one and one pitch here from Hurley. And this is swung on and grounded by the third baseman. A long throw to first and... Beautifully executed there by the third baseman, Aubrey Frayne, and they are very quickly two away here. So here comes the freshman catcher, Rylan Kelly. And Kelly getting the start in her first varsity game in a West Perry uniform. And she has nobody on here, and she swings at the first pitch, and it goes off the center fielder's head, and it's going to go all the way to the fence, a quick throw, and this, I believe this is going to be ruled a base hit, but, man, that ball, it looked like it went off the top of center fielder's head. That is Sydney Adler, and it's going to result in a two-out double. Adler was just... A little too close in and results in a two out double. So here is Addie Weist. And she swings and misses at the first pitch for strike one. Rylan Kelly, very aggressive. First pitch swing and results in a two out double. And here's a swing and a pitch. Look like a curveball from back here. And it's quickly 0-2. Addie Weiss had a good season a year ago in the batter's box. Driven in a bunch of RBIs. And she has a chance here to get her first one of the season here. The 0-2 from Hurley. And a swing and a miss down low again. And that that's a strikeout. And that will retire at the side. West Prairie gets a two-out double, but not much after that. We are heading into the second inning scoreless. You are watching West Prairie softball opening day against the Big Spring Lady Bulldogs exclusively on the West Prairie Athletic Department YouTube channel. We'll be back for the second inning here at West Prairie High School. Back here now for the second inning. Both teams had a runner in second base in scoring position in each half of the first. So here we go with the bottom of the second. Scoreless here in the second inning. And it's five, six, and, or excuse me, six, seven, eight hitters stood up for the Lady Bulldogs. And here comes the catcher wearing number 43, Dafina robbed the ball. And she swings out a big slider out of the zone for a strike one. Once again, West Perry with five home games in their 
in their first six games. And here is the rim. That will drop out there and bat it down momentarily. A quick throw in here. And that is going to be a leadoff single for the Bulldogs. Back to back leadoff hits for Big Spring. Daphina Rodderball with a liner drops out there and left. Good stop there for Matty Jenkins to make sure it doesn't get any further. So Daphina Rodderball, a leadoff single. Up next here is the left fielder. Is he Fry? And looks like we have uh, a quick meeting here at the virus box. We can see 22, so this is still Is he Fry? Defina Rada ball on first after a leadoff single. Big Spring also had a leadoff base hit to end the first inning. And here's a high fly ball. This is very high, as high as you can get. And this is handled easily out there and left by Jenkins. And there is one away. Wow, that was a high fly ball. That was like a major league fly ball right there. That's good for the first out. Rada ball forced to retreat back to first. Here's Sophie Wickard now. Sophie Wickard, the second baseman for the Lady Bulldogs. And she's showing signs of bun and that's up high and off of the catcher's hands, Rylan Kelly, and that's got to be ruled a pass ball, I believe. So Devine Rodderball going to second. And it's ball one to Sophie Wickard. That was a big problem for West Price softball a year ago. A lot of wild pitches, a lot of pass balls. But no doubt, that West Bay has been working on them during the offseason, during the preseason. I was here for both games, for both scrimmages here for West Bay against Carlisle and Beckerfield. There hasn't been any wild pitches for West Bay in those two games. Here's the 2 0 pitch, and that's going to go up high for ball three. Or a correction here, that I was following the scoreboard here, and it's, the count is, did the umpire just say 2 1? No, it's three balls and no strikes. Yeah, it's, here's a 3 0 pitch, and it's outside for ball four. I saw a four pitch walk here to Sophie Wickert. Not a whole lot of damage, but now you got to rest our first and second again, this time with only one out. And here's Aubrey Frain, the nine-hole hitter for the Lady Bulldogs. And first pitch is up high for ball one. One thing you definitely cannot do if you're at a waste is walk back-to-back -back batters to potentially make it bases loaded. We have seen that a couple of times a year ago, even with bases loaded. And there's a call, strike one. Let's play baseball having their opening day today. They are at Big Spring. They were supposed to host the Perry County Baseball Tournament this past Saturday, but because of the heavy rain that we got over the weekend, that Perry County Baseball Tournament has been postponed to Saturday, April 6th. And you can catch those games live right here on the West Perry Athletic Park YouTube channel, as well as Perry County Talk Sports Zone Facebook page. And now here is the next pitch, and it's outside. Two balls and two strikes here to Aubrey Frank. Yeah, mark down your calendars, folks, for the West Perry, for the Perry County Baseball Tournament, Saturday, uh, Saturday April 6th. And there's a swing and a miss, and that's a strikeout. First strikeout for Addy Weist. And that is out number two. Back to the top of the lineup now for the Big Spring Lady Bulldogs. Here is Kendall Boring. She started this game with a leadoff single. And she's showing the bunt there, pulls it back for ball one. We have a pinch runner at second base. I just realized that a pinch runner in second is Avery Scott. Sophie Wickard over at first. That's one ball, one strike here to Boring. This is the same count where Boring got the base hit. Gotta be careful here on this next pitch. 
The one and one swing up in the air, line drive, and Celine Hoffman dives for it, and it's off her glove. And then it gets past Jenkins by a hair, and now a quick throw, and two runs are going to come across the score. A good effort there by Celine Hoffman, but it drops down, and it's a two run double for Kendall Boring, and Big Spring is on the board first. Almost an amazing play for Celine Hoffman, getting her first start as a varsity softball player. And here's a line drive, and Taylor Lufer diving for it, and she makes the grab. A nice play to end the second inning. But the damage has been done, potentially Kendall Boring with a two-run double. A great effort for Celine Hoffman, but it drops down, and Big Spring has to... 2 nothing lead after a one and a half. We are, we'll be back for the bottom of the second. West Perry now down 2 nothing. Have you ever thought of becoming a P.I. Delaware official? Have you ever thought of becoming an umpire for softball or baseball? Now's your opportunity. Go to PIAA.org to find out how you can become a P.I. Delaware official. Again, that is PIAA.org. Ball in the second inning now for the West Prairie Lightning Mustangs. Five, six, and seven hitters stood up for the Lightning Mustangs. And here's a swing and a miss from Maddie Jenkins for strike one. Man, what a wild... Top of the second for both of these teams, really. The Bulldogs had two outs and were on first and second. And it was the line drive for Kendall Boring out to center field. Celine Hoffman trying to make a, an amazing play to end the inning, but it went off her glove and that's ruled a two run double. It was a very tough play, so we have to give Boring a double on that one. Now, two for two with a single and a double. And her two run double is a difference right now. Here comes the 0-2 pitch very quickly to Matty Jenkins. And right on the corner, inside corner there, and Matty Jenkins down on strikes to start the second inning. Maeve Hurley starting the second inning the same way she ended the first with a strikeout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Maeve Hurley. And here comes Celine Hoffman. No doubt that she'll want that play back that could have prevented two runs. And she's so in bunt here and pulls it back for ball one. Selene Hoffman. I'm the only person in the world who calls her American. I don't know. I mean, if you haven't heard Selene Hoffman sing, <laughs> she is a very good singer. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> And there's ball two to Celine Hoffman. Her mom, Jessica Hoffman, is a volunteer coach this year for the West Prairie softball team. A 2-0 pitch coming up here to Hoffman. And she swings that one and off the top off the top of the cage behind her. And that is strike one. One out, base is empty. Hoffman looking at a 2 1 pitch. Here it comes from Hurley. And she swings and misses that badly at that one. It has two balls and two strikes now. Hurley looking to make it three straight strikeouts. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Right down the middle. And it's called strike three. Three straight strikeouts for Maeve Hurley. 
And there are two away now. Good at bat there for Celine Hoffman. Look at then a count up to two and L for then looking at three or swinging at two of them then looking for strike three. So here comes Gwear Balls. Gwear Balls, uh, an amazing soccer player here at West Perry. Uh, her first pitch that she sees is up high for ball one. Gwear Balls right number 14. She is the right fielder. Comes the next pitch and swing at the high fastball. Look like and uh, fouls it back for strike one. One ball, one strike. Good crowd here today for opening day for the West Prairie Lady Mustangs. A lot of big spring supporters making the short trip from Newfield to be here. And of course, the home faithful West Prairie Mustang fans coming out to support the Lady Mustangs. Greer Ball is looking at strike two. It's one ball and two strikes now. Two outs here. Maeve Hurley looking to strike out the side. Can she do it here on this next pitch? And next pitch is up high off the catcher's glove. Two balls and two strikes. Two two pitch from early and it's just down low. Good take there from from balls. And the count is now full. Uh, three balls and two strikes. Greer balls only the second batter to get the count full. The first one was Lauren Foster to lead off the game. Three two with two outs, nobody on, and that ball gets away for ball four. So Maeve Hurley not going to strike out the side as Greer Balls gets on base with a walk. Two out walk here for Greer Balls. And that will bring up Lexi Naus, freshman second baseman for the Lady Mustangs. And Naus looking at her first pitch just a bit up high. Lexi Naus, not the tallest girl on the West Prairie team, but that does give now a bit of an advantage because when you're not as tall as most softball players are, you have a small strike zone. So this is going to make it tough for Maeve Hurley to try to get a strikeout here. It's a small strike zone here for Lexi Nows, and that is big. That's big for a player who is not as tall as many of the her teammates are. She swings at the first at the next pitch. One ball, one strike pitch. And able to find the strike zone that time as one ball and two strikes. There's the next pitch and swinging that one and fouling it off. Count still at one ball and two strikes. We're hoping to get some scoring updates from West Prey Baseball. West Prey Baseball having their opening day today at Big Spring. West Prey Junior Varsity Baseball is over at the varsity field on the other side of the school campus. Taking on Big Spring. And there's a swing and a miss, a pitch in the dirt, and a strikeout number four for Hurley, and that will end the second inning. West Prairie getting a run on first on a two-out walk from Greer Bowles, and nothing doing after that. We are heading to the third inning already in this one. Two-nothing lead for Big Spring. You are watching West Prairie softball opening day against the Big Spring Bulldogs exclusively on the West Prairie off Lake Department YouTube channel. We'll be back for inning number three here at West Perry High School.
third inning about to get underway here at West Perry. 2 0 lead for the Lay Bulldogs, getting two runs on two hits. Two run double for Kendall Boring in the second inning. So here we are in the top of the third. Three, four, and five hitters do that for our Lady Bulldogs. Here's Fick Rinaldi. Rinaldi walked her first time up, and there she looks at strike one. Third inning already here on opening day for the West Perry Lady Mustangs. Down to nothing, but still an easy comeback for the West Perry Mustangs to catch up. And there is ball one to Fick Rinaldi. While we're here in the third inning, now is a good time for our West Prairie, our first West Prairie Athletic Department trivia question of the game in the spring season. And here is your question. For, before Northern won the state championship a year ago, who was the last mid pen Colonial Division team to win a state championship? And this ball is line drive all the way to the fence, and Rinaldi is not stopping at second. She is going to slide into third for a leadoff triple. Vic Rinaldi slams that ball all the way to the fence, and it's a leadoff triple for the Big Spring shortstop. All right, early. Trouble here for Lady Mustangs in the third, and here is Zoe Sermon. She flew out to, le to left field her first time up, and she looks at ball one. Hey, get a fly out here. It's a good chance for an RBI. Vic Rinaldi after a leadoff triple at third, and here is ball two to Zoe Sermon. Zoe Sermon, all in one to start, flew out to left field. A base hit or a fly out in the outfield could make this a three run deficit. And there's a swing and a miss on a 2 0 pitch. That's that's a good swing there for Sorry Sermon. Chase going over it. Over it. That's 2 1. There's a missile, and that is going to go foul out into the JV baseball field. Uh, count now Eva uh, two balls and two strikes. Uh, next pitch just misses apparently and it's a full count now. Three balls and two strikes. The three two. Uh, swung on and grounded by the second baseman and hang over to the plate and that is going to be an RBI ground out. 4-3 for the RBI. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's now 3 nothing, An RBI ground out for Zoe Zimmerman. Makes it 3 nothing, And one out here with the bases empty now. Here is Maeve Hurley now. Got it out to the first baseman her first time up to end the first inning. And there she looks at strike one. Hurley swung at the first pitch in the first and got it out to the third baseman. First baseman Haley Prow. And that ball too much inside ends up hitting Hurley. And it's a hit by pitch to put a runner on first with one out. Uh, looks like we're going to have a pinch runner here for the Big Spring pitcher. And it's going to be Chance Flanagan. Pinch running at first. Once again, your trivia question for today, our first trivia question of the spring sports season. Before Northern, uh, before Northern a year ago, who was the last mid pen Conference Colonial Division team to win a state championship. And there's a ground ball and Lufer diving for it and goes out in left field and that's going to be a base hit. Base hit here for Dafina Rodeball. Now two for two with two singles. Very consistent for Rodeball. And now another pinch runner coming up here. Now it looks like it's going to be Avery Scott. 
The Lady Bulldogs at first. So two pinch runners here on first and second. And here's Issy Fry. She flew out to left field her first time up, making her 0 for 1. And there's a called first strike. Rounds on first and second with nobody, with only one out, excuse me. Now, 3 nothing ball game. And that is just outside for ball one. One ball, one strike. The count here to Issy Fry. A one one in the dirt. Ball two. Definitely a good process here for pitcher and catcher here for Westbury. Adi Weiss to Rylan Kelly. Ryan Kelly, a freshman, making her first catching appearance in a West Prairie uniform. And there's ball three. Three balls and a strike now. And 3-1 is in for strike two. It's a full count now. Rounds on first and second with one out. A 3 nothing game. One run scored earlier in this inning for those who are just joining us. The 3 2 from Weast. And it's a rip out and off the dugout on a Westbury Junior Varsity baseball field. So the count will remain at 3 2. Man, that looked like trouble from here. If it was fair, that one scored one, maybe two runs. That ball was ripped hard, but just foul. And next pitch was up high, and Fry swung on it and tips it back. And here's a wrap out to center field. It's going to go over Celine Hoffman, and Hoffman has to make a quick play. One score, one run is going to score, and and now the second runner going play at the. Throw to the plate and save at the plate is the second runner. And it's now a, a 5 nothing ball game. A two-run double for Issy Fry. That ball was ripped hard. Not a chance for Selene Hoffman to get back quick enough. Three runs here in this inning. Two in the second. So a 5 nothing lead now, and here's Sophie Wickard. She walked and later scored. Issy Fry now 1 for 2 with a double and two ribbies. And there is ball 1 here to Sophie Wickard. Wickard walked on four pitches her first time up. Pitch is up high for ball two. Sophie Wicker, the big spring second baseman. A good eye at the plate. She has seen six pitches all outside the strike zone. 2 0, way up high for ball three. Let's pray the first game of the season. They'll be back at home on Thursday against Shippensburg. That will be our next broadcast here on the West Pay Athletic Party YouTube channel. And what's that ball for? Oh, I guess there was a strike before. I didn't see it. But so now it's three balls and one strike. Yeah, if you can hear something in the background, there's a truck behind me here. <laughs> and there is ball four. Sophie Wicker, no official at bat, but two walks. Now runners have first and second here with only one out. And now first year head coach for West Perry, Denny Wansick. Denny Wansick here coming out to talk to the infield and to Addy Weist. Two runs for Big Spring in the second, three runs here in the third. And Big Spring is looking for more. 
Les Perry so far, no runs on only one hit. Ron and Kelly had a two out double in the first inning. West Perry, I mean, despite the last couple of seasons not going so well for West Perry, no doubt that this West Perry team is poised for success. I mean, not that long ago, about five or six years ago, back in 2019, the West Perry Lane Mustangs winning their first state championship. And here's the first pitch here to Aubrey Frayne, and that ball gets away as ball one and a wild pitch. Sends Issy Fry and Sophie Wicker to third and second. And that was a swing and a miss for strike one. Arby Frayne 0 for 1 with a strikeout. The number nine hitter. And timeout is called here. A discussion being made by the Shortstop and third baseman for Wes Perry. That's Taylor Luther and Ron Foster. And here is the swing up. A high pop up here and lands in front. Up the right field, that's Greer Bowles. And because of that, that's going to be rolled ahead. And a run comes across the score. It's now 6 nothing on a bloop single. A quick throw to third and back safe it is Sophie Wickard over there at third base. A little bit windy here at Westbury High School, of course. What do you expect out Westbury here? When it comes, when it's springtime, it's always windy here. <laughs> I'm not even joking about that. It is always windy here. Two balls and no strikes here. This is the top of the lineup, by the way. Kendall Boring with a third at bat in three innings. And it's two balls and a strike now. Aubrey Frayne at first. Sophie Wickard over at third. A 6 nothing lead. And this next pitch is bounced back. Is hit back for strike two. Two balls, one strike pitch coming out to Kendall Boring. And that's ball three. Kendall Boring two for two. A single, a double, and two RBIs in our last at bat. Next pitch is hit high out towards right field and Greer Ball is able to make the running grab and a run is going to come across the score on a sacrifice fly from Kendall Boring. It wasn't that deep, but it was just deep enough. I guess I missed Aubrey Freighton was over at second on the stolen base. So... Aubrey Frank going on to third, and Sophie Rickard scores. They're making 7 0. Here's a quick first pitch ground out, and nice scoop there from the first baseman. And more runs come across the score for Big Spring in the third. It is 7 0 for the Lay Bulldogs after two and a half. Heading to the bottom of third. West Perry down 7 0. Big Spring Lady Bulldogs in the top of third inning. Nine batters 
came off to the plate, five of them came across the score. Thus a seven nothing lead. So here we go for West Perry. Nine, one, and two hitters coming up for West Perry. There's a first pitch strike to Carly Shaw. Carly Shaw, the designated player for the Lady Mustangs in the bottom of the lineup. To lay us off here in the bottom of the third. Seven to lay for Big Spring. And that is ball one. Starting pitcher Maeve Hurley for Big Spring has been on fire to start this game. Only one hit given up. That was a two out double from Rollin Kelly in the first inning. Ever since then, Hurley has struck out four batters. Four out of five batters struck out. Two balls and a strike now to Shaw. Carly Shaw is swinging at that one. It's got to be grinded by the second baseman and throw over the first is good. Easy play for Sophie Wicker and we are going back to the top of the lineup now for the Lady Mustangs. So here comes Lauren Foster. Lauren Foster had a nice play to end the top of the third inning. Lauren Foster 0 for 1. She flew out to right field her first time up. Uh, there's a ground ball over to the shortstop. Long throw and a bang bang play. Nice off for Fick Rinaldi. Getting up to it quick and throwing it immediately and very quickly there are two outs. That probably looked like a mid-season fan. Like, I know that Big Spring had two games already last week. But that's a, that was an incredible play there for Fick Rinaldi. Able to get to the ball quick, then firing it very quick to get Lauren Foster out in the last second. And first pitch ball outside the strike zone to Taylor Lufer. Taylor Lufer ground out to third base her first time up. And a high strike. One ball, one strike. Big Spring up 7-0, scoring two runs in the second, then five runs in the third. So West Spring needed to bounce back now. And remember, this is a Big Spring team, already with two wins under their belt, scoring 39 runs in their first two games. 17-7 against Carlisle last Thursday, and then a week ago from yesterday, they started the season with a 22-1 victory at Bermudian Springs. Two balls, one strike here to Tara Lufer. And she swings that one high up in the air, and that's going to go out of play for strike two. comes to 2-2 two, two. and this is up in the air out towards right field and this is going to be hung on well by Boring and that is the 1-2-3 inning. The Mustangs going down 1-2-3, two, two ground outs and a fly out and we're going to the fourth inning. Big Spring looking to extend their 7-0 lead in the fourth. You are watching West Perry softball opening day against the Big Spring Lady Bulldogs exclusively on the West Perry Athletic Power YouTube channel. We'll be back for inning number four here at West Perry. Back here for inning number four, the Big Spring Bulldogs up 7-0. I was just told to make a public service announcement. In case you guys didn't know, we have a solar eclipse coming. 
on Monday, April 8th. There will be a, to a tow story cliffs going over Erie. It's going to travel from Texas all the way up to the northeast, and Erie is going to be getting a tow story cliffs. Meanwhile, here at West Perry, and for much of the mistake, we are getting 90% of it, especially right here. We're getting like a 93% uh, percent totality here for the story cliffs on Monday, April 8th. Because of that, West Perry, along with several other schools around the Mid-State, have decided to have an early dismissal on Monday, April 8th. And so, get ready for that. And this ball just off the top of the fence. It was inches away from being a home run. Instead, it's got to be a leadoff double here for Vic Rinaldi. A home run was just missed by inches. It was the top of the fence. And it's a leadoff double for Big Spring. That ball's ripped hard, just missing a home run. So here comes Zoe Zimmerman now. She got an RBI on the ground out, but she's over two. Here she swings at the first pitch right to Selene Hoffman. And not aggressive base running here from second and third. Probably, I think Rinaldi thought that Selene Hoffman was going to have a play on that, but instead it is a base hit for Zoe Zimmerman. And Vic Rinaldi going over to third. I just hope for Monday, April 8th, that when that story eclipse comes here, I hope it's not as cloudy as it is today. I mean, it's pretty cloudy. Our friends over at ABC 27 Weather Center, there is a stolen base here for Sully Silverman. So, two runners in scoring position now with nobody out. Now, our friends over at ABC 27 Weather Center saying that there could be a rain shower later today, but it won't be until after this game is over. So no threat of weather here today during opening day for West Prairie softball. Two balls and no strikes here to Maeve Hurley. Maeve Hurley, she was hit by a pitch in her last plate appearance. Three balls and no strikes now to Hurley. You do not want to give a four-pitch walk to make the bases loaded. And that's exactly what happened. There's a four-pitch walk. And the bases are now no loaded with nobody out. We're going to have a pinch runner again here for the big spring pitcher. Major League Baseball opening day is this Thursday in just 48 hours from now. If you're a big Yankees fan like me, you know who we have first. We are at Houston for a huge four-game series against the Astros. I hope the Yankees win all four of those games. <laughs> what well, a big way that would start the season. Here we go with our next batter. That is Dafina Rodaball. She is two for two with two singles. She has scored twice in this game, and she rips out the first pitch and fouls it off for strike one. Bases are loaded here with nobody out. Full Bulldogs on the bases for Big Spring. And here's a rib and that's going to go out to center field for a base hit. One run scores. Second run coming across the score. And it's a two run single for Dafina Rodaball. Her third hit of the game. Her first two RBIs of the game. And it's now a 9 nothing ball game. And I think the head coach, Denny Wansick, has seen enough. And they're probably going to be getting a pitching change here. Lauren Foster might be the new pitcher, but we'll let you know. As soon as we hear anything, we're going to take a quick break. It looks like a pitching change coming up here for the West Prairie Mustangs. Big spring up 9 nothing, and looking for more here in the fourth inning.
New pitcher here for the West Prairie Lady Mustangs is Lauren Foster. Coming from third base to pitch here for the Lady Mustangs. Addie Weist is now over at third base. And so here we go with Lauren Foster throwing ball one here to Issy Fry. 9 nothing here. Runners on first and second here. Still with nobody out. And this ball goes down the third base line and it goes foul for strike one. Issy Fry, one for two. She had a two RBI double in her last at bat in the third. Started a big rally for the Lady Bulldogs in the third inning. And right on the inside part of the plate, and that is strike two to Issy Fry. Oh, Foster, a senior here. She's going to be pitching a few games here this year out. She probably won't start in so in many of them. She might start in a few games, maybe even on Thursday when the Lady Mustangs come back home to take on the Shippensburg Lady Greyhounds Thursday afternoon at 4.30 for our next broadcast here on the West Play Athletic Park YouTube channel. One ball, two strikes to Issy Fry, the big spring left fielder, and it's in the dirt for ball two. Foster 2-2 two, two is way up high for ball three. Big Spring, they can end this game in the fourth inning, but they need six runs to do it. The mercy rule is you get 15 runs after three innings or 15 runs after four innings. It's the same thing, but then Big Spring can really end it with 10 runs after five innings. Ten run deficit, they're up by nine at the moment, and there is ball four from Issy Fry, and the bases. Once again, are loaded here with nobody out. Second time in this inning. Bases are loaded for Big Spring Lady Bulldogs. And here comes Sophie Wickard. She has walked twice in this game. No official app out for her just yet. And there is ball one. Sophie Wickard looked, looked at one strike in her first two plate appearances. There is ball two to Wickard. Great, great play discipline from the Big Spring second baseman. Sophie Wickard walked twice already. And that was a tough pitch to take, but she took it anyway. The 2 0. -oh. And there is going to be a strike, 2 0 1. That's only the second strike that Sophie Wickard has looked at here in this game. Walked twice. Four pitch walk in the second, five pitch walk in the second, and she rips one. She rips one down the third baseline and it goes foul. That is strike two. That's the first time Sophie Wickard has swung the bat and it was hit hard, but just foul. Big Spring fans down the third baseline, <laughs> ducking their heads. And I know what that's like. The first year of Webby broadcasted West Frey softball, I was down there behind the dugout. Like right where you're seeing it right now, it was at the far right corner. And there was one game that I'll never forget. It was against Shippensburg, who we have on Thursday. The line drive foul ball went right to me. I had to duck out of the way. There is a full count now. Three balls and two strikes to Sophie Wickard. Bases are loaded. And there is a basis loaded walk. It will drive in another run. Makes it 10 nothing. So, Dafina Rodderball goes to third. Issy Fry over to second. Sophie Wicker at first. Here's the number nine hole hitter, Aubrey Frayne. Looking up all one. Again, Big Spring can end this game right here. They need five more runs and then keep West Prey scoreless in the bottom of the fourth. And there is strike one to Frayne. Frayne had an RBI single in their last at bat. She is one for two with a strikeout and an RBI single. And here is a swing, and that's going to stay fair. And now a long run here for. 
the left fielder, Matty Jenkins. Jenkins with a nice long run, and that is the first out of the inning. So now here's the top of the lineup for Big Spring. Kendall Boring, and this ball gets away, and both runners will... Or I take that back, there was actually an RBI on that fly out actually, so that is going to be ruled a sacrifice fly, and it's 11 nothing. Both runners have fans on the wild pitch. Yeah, I didn't see the run score until I saw the scoreboard behind me here. My mistake there. So a sack fly for Aubrey Frayne. And it's now 2-1 here to Kendall Boring. Now here's the swing. Grounded by Lufer. Lufer fires one over and another run comes across the score on the ground out. A 6-3 RBI. And it's now 12 nothing for the Lady Bulldogs. I was out number two. Izzy Fry is scoring from third. And Sylvie Wicker going over to third. And now first pitch swinging here from Sydney Adler, the ninth batter for, for Big Spring in this inning. Big Spring had nine batters come up in the third inning. Here they do it again, the fourth, the two outs now. One strike after that foul ball. The sun's starting to come out. And there is ball one. Sydney Adler 0 for 3. Two line outs and a ground out for Sydney Adler, the Big Spring center fielder. And here she rips one, and that's a fair ball. It just hugs the line down the third baseline, and another run has got to across the score. It is an RBI double for Sydney Adler. It just stayed in foul territory, and not, it couldn't have been by much. And it brings in another run. And it's now 13 sip. We bat around here. And it's Vic Rinaldi. She missed a home run to start this inning by inches. And a timeout here. I think we have a pinch hitter here. We do have a pinch hitter. It is Hannah Darhauer. Hannah Darhauer now pinch hitting here. She's a 10th batter for Big Spring, and she rips one, knocked down by Addy Weiss at third, a long throw to third, and that will end the inning. 5-3 put out, but five more runs come across the play for the Lady Bulldogs. Now up 13 zip, and we're hanging to the bottom of the fourth. West Spring need to do something here to keep this game going. And we'll be back for the ball on the four. Big spring of 13 0. We are back here now for a fourth inning, 13 nothing. Oh, 
but makes bring six runs in the fourth inning. And here's a swing and a miss, and that's strike two now to Ryan Kelly. Ryan Kelly, the only West Prairie Mustangs with a base hitch. He had a two out double back in the first inning, now down 0 and 2. And, big, and here is a swing and grab by the second baseman. And that is a routine play from second to first. And there is quickly one out. Here's our answer to our West Prairie Athletic Parade trivia question of the game. Our first trivia question of the spring sports season. Before Northern a year ago, who was the last mid pen Colonial Fishing team to win a state championship? The answer? was the Big Spring Lady Bulldogs back in 2012. And I know what some of you might be thinking, what about West Perry? They won the state championship in 2019. Yes, we all know that. But uh, the thing was, the thing is, West Perry wasn't in the Colonial Division that year. They were in the, Cap the mid Penn Conference Capital Division, and they moved to the Colonial Division back in 2020. So, Tech, technically, Big Spring was the last mid pen Colonial Division team to win a state championship while in that division back in 2012, my senior year here at West Perry. One ball, one strike here to Addy Wiest. Addy Wiest now the third baseman. And here's a swing and a miss for strike two. Addy Weiss pitched for, thir for three innings, faced 24 batters, only had one strikeout, walked four, gave up 10 hits and 13 runs. And here's the swing and foul ball, still one ball and two strikes. One out, bases are empty. Only two Mustangs have got have reached base here in this game. Ryan Cotty with a two out double. Two out double in the first, and Greer Bowles had a two out walk in the second. It was a one, two, three inning for West Prairie in the third, and here's two and two. This game will go for at least one more inning. Big Spring not necessarily needing more runs, but West Prairie needs to find a way to cut into this deficit. And there is ball three to Addy Weist. Next time up for both teams, West Prairie and Big Spring will be at home on Thursday. West Prairie will take on Shippensburg, and Big Spring will take on Waynesboro. And both mid pen crying efficient matchups, and Addy Weist swings and misses at the slider, and that is the second time Addy Weist has struck out swinging, and there are two away now here in the fourth. Definitely not an ideal way for Denny Wansick making his head coaching debut here at West Perry. But again, the, the goal for Denny Wansick and the West Perry Mustangs, it's a really good goal this year, having a 500 season, having at least a winning season. Doesn't have to be pretty, but... Hey, you win a few games, and you have a chance, and there is a base hit. That's the second hit of the game, and it's good for Matty Jenkins. Getting down the first baseline, and the sun is starting to come out. First pitch swing for Matty Jenkins, and results in a two-out single. That's the, just the second base hit for Wes Perry. And now here is Elaine Hoffman. A runner on first with two outs after a two out single from Maddie Jenkins. And first pitch to Celine Hoffman is up high. Celine Hoffman went down on strikes looking in the second inning. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you haven't heard Celine Hoffman sing, you're missing out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, she was um she was Pearl in the SpongeBob SquarePants musical. That was done by West Perry students a couple of weeks ago. And Slade Hoffman, I mean, she was pearl and she was fantastic. She had a solo and it was it was very well done. And she had a screen that terrified me a little bit when I was watching on opening night. It's, it kind of still does. <laughs> but Slade fit that role perfectly as Pearl in the SpongeBob SquarePants musical. It was well done by everybody, really. 
for the SpongeBob musical. Two balls and one strike now to Selene Hoffman. And that ball gets away from the catcher, and that's going to be a pass ball hand. <laughs> a, a little bit of a trip there for Matty Jenkins, sliding into second. That's going to be ruled a wild pitch, and it's three balls and one strike. Three balls, one strike. And there's a swing and miss on the inside pitch for strike two. Three balls and two strikes now. Maeve Hurley only giving up two hits. And here comes the 3 2. And it's up high, and that is ball four. Slane Hoppin going to first. This is the first time that Les Prey had two runners on base. And he got a chance for Greer Bowles to do some damage. She reached first on a walk in her last plate appearance on a full count. So, no official off back yet for Greer Bowles. Here's the first pitch to her. And it's just down low below the strike zone for strike one. ESPN opening day coverage on Thursday night. For opening day, the defending world champions, Texas Rangers, hosting the Chicago Cubs in a season opener for the defending world champions. There is strike one, swinging a miss. Square ball is just getting under that one. Uh, here's the grounder. Got to hurry here, and this is going to stay fair. And Greer Bowes is going to reach first. And now the Mustangs have bases loaded on an infield single. Big Spring thought it was going to roll out of bounds, but it never did. And it's going to be an infield single for Greer Bowes. And the Mustangs now have the bases loaded with two outs. A big opportunity here for LA Mustangs and Big Spring realizing that taking a timeout, the infield coming in to try to calm Maeve Hurley down here a little bit. This is the first time that West Prey had a runner on third, and of course, it's the first time the Mustangs had the bases loaded. Maddie Jenkins at third, Celine Hoffman at second, Greer Bowles at first. And here's Lexi Naus. Lexi Naus struck out swinging her first time up. And there she swings under the high fastball for strike one. Lexi Naus struck out swinging to end the second inning. A big moment here for the Mustangs to try to cut into this 13-0 deficit. And next pitch up high in the air in the infield. And this is going to be caught by the second baseman, Sophie Wickard. And the Bulldogs strand them loaded. A P4 to end the fourth. And we are going to the fifth and potentially last inning. Big Spring is going to be looking for some insurance runs to secure their third Mercy Rule victory of the year. We are going to fifth inning, 13 nothing for Big Spring. You are watching West Prey Softball opening day against the Big Spring Lady Bulldogs exclusively on the West Prey Athletic Department YouTube channel. We'll be back for inning number five.
So they just changed the score. I think we had an error here in the scoreboard, and the score is actually 14 nothing hanging into a fifth thing. We missed a run. Uh, they just came back here and confirmed it with me. So, yeah, we, we missed a run, apparently. So it's 14 nothing out after four innings. And Big Spring not necessarily needing any more runs here in this inning, but they'll be looking for some insurance regardless. And so here we go in inning number five. Zoe Zimmerman to start us off here. Zoe Zimmerman, one for two with an RBI and a base hit. She scored once in this game. And she swings at the first pitch. And there's a high fly ball, and that's going to be caught by the shortstop Taylor Roofer. And there's the first out. That's the first time that Big Spring has not had a laid off base hit. And so here we go with Dave Hurley. She's got to be very happy with what the late. Bulldogs offense has been able to produce. Maeve Hurley 0 for 1 so far. She was hit by a pitch. She walked her last time up. And she has scored twice in this game. That was strike one. And here's a grounder. And over to the second baseman. Flip over to first. A nice play there from the second baseman, Lexi Naus. And they're quickly two away now. Big Spring has not gone down 1-2-3 inning. Has not gone down 1-2-3 in this game so far. Two outs, nobody on. Here's the Fina Royal Ball. Three for three. Three singles. Two RBIs. Swing at a first pitch. Grounded by the first baseman. A foot race to the back. And it's in time for a third baseman. And Big Spring goes down 1-2-3 for the first time in this game. By the West Plain Mustangs, they need at least five runs to keep this game going. Otherwise, Big Spring has got to win on a mercy rule for a third straight game to start the year. We'll be back for a ball in the fifth. Big Spring up 14 nothing. We have a new pitcher coming up here for Big Spring. As the day is done for Maeve Hurley, pitching four innings, facing 17 batters, struck out five, walked two, gave up three hits and four, in four shutout innings. So the new pitcher here is Riley Stewart. 
And it's six, seven, eight here stood up for the Lady Mustangs as Selene Hoffman. Or excuse me, nine, one, and two here stood up for the Mustangs. My mistake there. And here is Carly Shaw swinging at the first pitch and fouling off for strike one. Riley Stewart coming in to pitch now. And West Perry meets five. Or now they just changed the score again. So I think there was an accidental button there on the uh, scoreboard down there at the West Perry bench. It's 13 nothing. So much confusing here. I'll tell you what. <laughs> so that eased the pressure off a little bit. Now West West Perry needs four runs in this inning to keep the game going. And that's a good start for West Perry. Not ideal, but Carly Shaw hits, gets hit by a pitch. And it's a layoff base runner for the Lady Mustangs. So much confusion here on opening day for West Perry Lady Mustangs on the scoreboard. <laughs> So it's 13 nothing, and back to the top of the lineup now. Lineup now here for Lauren Foster. As she looks at the first pitch for ball one. Believe it or not, we have seen big comebacks like this before. In recent years for West Bray. Down by at least 10 runs and then find a way to score, to bounce back and make a game out of it. But right, they don't they don't need all thirteen runs here. Really, if they want to end this game, they need twenty three they need twenty three runs right here in this inning. Which can happen. We the most we ever seen in a single inning in West Prairie Softball history was in the state tournament back in two thousand nineteen. When West Prairie scored twenty runs against the District Twelve champion Lansdale Catholic in the first round of the state tournament back in two thousand nineteen, West Prairie scored twenty runs in the first inning. That's a tall task here for, in a lo against a local rifle in Big Spring, and now you go runner in a rundown and safe at second is the runner for West Prairie, Carly Shaw. I don't think she was in trouble, but she got, decided to take up, and she is there at second on a stolen base. It's two balls and two strikes here to Lauren Foster. And next pitch just missing for ball three. Once again, we want to thank you to everyone at home tuning in on the West Prairie Athletic Department YouTube channel. My name is Alex Wall, the Golden Pipes of West Perry Athletics. We're on second here with nobody out. And next pitch up high just missing and it's a walk here for Lauren Foster reaching base for the first time. She went over two now she reaches first on a walk. Nobody out. This could be very good for the Mustangs. But you can't imagine if the score gets a little bit closer they might get Maeve Hurley back in the game here. And there is ball one here to Taylor Lufer. Lufer 0 for 2. And the wind starting to blow here. Not looking for any precipitation here tonight until after 8 tonight. Nobody out. Fire on first and second. And that next pitch to Lufer is up high for ball 2. Fifth inning here, West Perry needs four runs to keep this game going. Otherwise, Big Spring will win on a mercy roll for a third straight game to open the season. And here's the next pitch up high for ball three. 3-0 three here to the senior Taylor Lufer. For ball four. Bases are now loaded for the Mustangs, and they can keep this game going with a grand slam right here. Carly Shaw at third, Lauren Foster on second, Taylor Lufer at first, and now a timeout being called here for a big spring, knowing how big this is. Bases are loaded. With nobody out, the second time the Mustangs have the bases loaded. They did back in the fourth inning. And then infield flyout ended 
the bassist Laura thread forth the Mustangs. So here we go at Rollin Kelly. One for two. She had a two out double back in the first. And she looks at ball one in the dirt. This is going well here for the Lay Mustangs. This is a West Prairie team that rarely gets shut that rarely gets shut out. They only got shut out twice a year ago. And so West Prairie making sure that doesn't happen. They're still in this game and there is strike one. One and one here to Rylan Kelly. West Prairie looking to get on the board. They need four runs to keep this game going. And there's a high ball and it goes off the catcher squad and taking a risk and out at the plate is Rylan Jenkins. Or, excuse me, Carly Shaw. Everybody moves up a base. But Carly Shaw out trying to risk it. And it's two balls and one strike here to Ryland Kelly. That's a big out for Big Spring. But still work to do. And here's a swing right back. And now throw to the plate. This is not going to be a force out. So now you got the runner at third in the rundown. That is Lauren Foster. And back to third safely. And this is going to be, uh, I guess, an infield single. That's a, uh, hey, whatever works. So the bases are going to be loaded again with an infield single. Trying to get Lauren Foster be out between third and home. And that's Ryan Kelly's second base hit of the game. So here is Addie Wiest. She struck out twice in this game. And she swings at the first pitch and misses for strike one. Now, I don't know if you call that an infield single or not. I mean, you got to her down the run down between third and the plate. And here's a swing and grab by the third baseman. A run is going to come across the score on a 5-3 ground out. And West Perry is on the board. That is a big out number two, and the Mustangs are down to their final out. Lauren Foster scoring from third. Taylor Lufer at third. Ron Kelly at second. And here's Matty Jenkins. Maddie Jenkins looking at ball one. Two runs in scoring position. They need three more runs in two outs. And there is strike one. Maddie Jenkins one for two. She had a base hit. Two out base hit back in the fourth. There's a swing at the high fastball, and now the Mustangs are down to their final strike. Taylor Lufer at third, Riley, Rylan Kelly at second, two outs, the one-two pitch. And a swing and a miss, and that will do it here. The ball game is over, and the Big Spring Lady Bulldogs win their third straight game on a mercy rule to start the 2024 season. We'll be back in about a minute for the West Prairie Athletic Park post-game report. I throw Nurse final stats and our West Prairie Athletic Park player of the game. We'll have that coming up for you in about a minute. Big Spring wins it in five innings, 13 to one.
We are back here for the West Prairie Athletic Park post game wrap up. The 2024 softball season is officially underway. And it's a tough one for the Lane Mustangs, especially for the new head coach for West Prairie, Den Denny Wansick. Denny Wansick making his head coaching debut for the West Prairie Lady Mustangs tonight and results in a 13 1 victory for the Fisling Big Spring Lady Bulldogs. And we have the final tallies for you here today. For Big Spring, 13 runs on 11 hits, no errors, leaving five runners left on base. For the West Prairie Mustangs, one run on four hits, no errors, leaving seven runners left on base. The winning pitcher for Big Spring is Maeve Hurley. Maeve Hurley getting her third win of the season. She pitched four shutout innings, giving up three hits and two walks. And she struck out five West Prairie Mustangs in the win. The losing pitcher for West Prairie is Addie Weist. Addie Weist pitching for three innings, facing 24 batters. Had one strikeout, but gave up four walks, 10 hits, and 13 runs for the West Prairie Lady Mustangs. Our West Prairie Athletic Park player of the game is the winning pitcher for Big Spring, Maeve Hurley. What an incredible game for her. Only giving up three, get up three hits. They only given up three hits in the victory and four shutout innings. She did not pitch in the last inning, up by 13. West Prairie able to give one run in the fifth inning. But not enough for West Prairie to make a comeback here. So, Big Spring Lady Bulldogs improved to 3-0 and on the season. Now three wins by Mercy Rule to start the 2024 season. And this was the mid pen Colonial Division Oper for both teams. Big Spring now 1-0 in that division in the mid pen Conference. Big Spring will return home on Thursday to take on the Waynesboro Maidens at 4.30. And our next broadcast here on the West Prairie Athletic Park YouTube channel will be West Perry's next game. West Prairie now 0-1 to start the year. They'll be looking for their first win on Thursday, taking on the Shippensburg Greyhounds at 4.30. That will be our next broadcast here on the West Prey Athletic Power YouTube channel, Thursday at 4.30. We'll see you then. That's going to do for us here at West Prey High School. On behalf of our athletic director, Ryan Anderson, our, and our high school principal, Chris Casey, and our superintendent, Jeff Coons, and all of us here at West Prey High School, I am Alex Wall, the Golden Pipes of West Prey Athletics, saying so long from West Perry High School. This has been a presentation of West Prey Softball Opening Day against the Big Spring Lady Bulldogs, exclusively on the West Prey Athletic Department YouTube channel. Your final score on this one, the Big Spring Lady Bulldogs win it 13-1 in five innings. Good night, everybody. We'll see you on Thursday for West Prairie Softball Game 2 against the Shepherdsburg Greyhounds.